morning everyone today we are going to talk about a condition called femoral hernia this will be my last topic in the season on hernias although it's not a very common hernia certainly not as common as inguinal hernias or umbilical hernia however it is a very important hernia to talk about it is more common in women as compared to men i have never seen one in children so it's extremely uncommon in children it is more common in elderly women as compared to younger women the reason it is more important in my opinion as compared to other hernias is because it has a higher complication rate as compared to other type of hernias before we go into further about femoral hernia let's talk about the anatomy where the femoral hernia comes out from as i had explained in my first video on hernias is that hernias come out of the weak spots in our tummy and to explain the anatomy i have drawn a little diagram over here so this is a torso of a person this is the umbilicus or the navel this is the fold in our groin this is the left thigh and this is the right thigh on the top of the right thigh i have drawn this and this same structure will be on this side as well so it's present on both sides there is a very strong ligament or a cord like structure where our fold is when we stand up or we sit down where we get the fold between our tummy and our thigh underlying the skin there is a very strong structure called the inguinal ligament this structure separates our tummy from our thigh just below the inguinal ligament there are three or four very important structures now these structures come from our tummy into the thigh and vice versa so first important structure on the outside is the nerve next to it just inside is the main artery to the leg that is called the femoral artery right inside the femoral artery is a very big structure called the femoral vein this is the main blood vessel which takes the blood from our thigh and our leg back into our tummy and back to the heart out of these three structures this is the biggest structure now whenever we do exercise especially exercise involving our legs we run we walk or we are doing any sorts of squatting or whatever we are doing with the thigh the blood flow in the thigh increases and the leg also increases that means there is more blood going back into the femoral vein back into the tummy and back to the heart to accommodate this extra blood the vein is quite soft it is quite distensible which means it can expand and it can retract so it can become bigger if required to if more blood is going in and it becomes slightly smaller if less blood is going in so when more blood is going back into the femoral vein back to the heart when this vein expands so for example from this size for example i'm just giving an example from this size if it becomes this size it has to have space to expand and that that space it creates by this little fatty canal like a tunnel just next to the vein on the inside and this canal or a little tunnel contains only little fat one or two lymph glands nothing major structure but this gives us a cushion to expand the vein into so the vein can expand without getting compressed because it can't move on the outside because there is a big strong artery over there the artery will not let it expand it can't expand up because there is an inguinal ligament over here and the only place it can expand is on this side and that structure is called the femoral canal this is the structure through which the femoral hernia comes out from next important thing to understand is for all these four structures to go in and out of our tummy into the thigh and from thigh into the tummy nature has made holes in our inguinal ligament so there is a hole for the nerve 
there is a hole for the artery and there is a hole for the vein and there is a hole for the femoral canal. The hole for the nerve which takes the nerve from our tummy into our thigh is obviously plugged by the nerve. The hole for the artery is similarly plugged by the artery and hole for the vein is plugged by the vein. As there are no structures or important structures going in and out of the femoral canal, there is nothing plugging or blocking the hole that takes the femoral canal from inside the tummy to into the thigh. And hence, this is a weak spot through which hernias come out. As I said earlier, these hernias are more common in women, especially elderly women as compared to men. And the reason is because men have a much narrower pelvis as compared to women. Women will have a wider pelvis as compared to men. And when the pelvis is wide, the holes stretch out. So when the pelvis is wide, all these holes are wider, stretch out sideways. And the femoral canal in women, especially in elderly women, is more wider, more open as compared to men. And that is why the incidence of femoral hernias is higher in women as compared to men. So what increases the risk of developing femoral hernia? Like any other hernia, anything that increases the pressure in our abdomen, like chronic constipation, chronic cough, pregnancy, or excessive fluid in the tummy, what we call ascites or peritoneal dialysis, in which fluid is pumped into the tummy to support the failing kidneys, they can all increase the risk of developing femoral hernias. What are the symptoms of femoral hernia? The commonest symptom of femoral hernia is feeling a lump in the groin. It is quite easy to feel in slim patients. However, it can be quite hard in overweight patients, especially because it is underneath the fold of the groin. Sometimes patients complain of a painful lump in the groin. However, sometimes they only complain of pain in the groin because as I said earlier, sometimes these hernias can be quite difficult to feel because they can be quite small. Some patients present for the first time with bowel obstruction because a knuckle of intestine comes into the hernia and gets blocked because the hole is quite tight and quite small. And in that case, they present with vomiting, constipation and inability to pass wind. Occasionally, these patients can be very sick and present with strangulation, which means the loop of bowel that gets stuck into the hernia loses its blood supply and literally becomes gangrenous and dies. And those patients are extremely sick and extremely septic. Both these complications of femoral hernias will require an emergency operation. How are these hernias diagnosed? Taking a good history by the doctor and examination in a slim patient, feeling a lump in the groin below the groin crease can clinch the diagnosis of femoral hernias. However, because many things like lymph glands, etc., can present with lump in the groin, and sometimes the femoral hernia can be quite close to the inguinal hernia, especially indirect inguinal hernia. In those patients, an ultrasound scan or even a CT or MRI scan will be able to make the correct diagnosis. So what is the treatment for femoral hernia? Almost every patient with femoral hernia will require surgery. The reason is because the complication rate with strangulation and obstruction is quite high. Operations can be performed with an open procedure, which is a cut in the groin, and usually a couple of sutures into the femoral canal to block the canal or a mesh plug is used to block the hole. Mesh plug is also used during a keyhole procedure. The success rate of these operations is quite good. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did find it informative then do please give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Thank you for watching and until next time I shall see you very soon. Take care.